Rebuilding a vintage open steam launch part 15, testing the ceramic burner and the boiler in steam. If you watched the last episode you will have seen me make this ceramic burner, which was last seen in the acid bath. And it's now out of the acid bath and I ran it under the kitchen tap to get rid of all the acid. And what I'm doing at the moment, using a piece of scotch Brite, which is like a scouring pad, is just cleaning it up. I'm going to paint this anyway, but I thought I'd give it a good clean, because it's always good to get rid of every trace of any silver solder flux residue. This clip shows me putting my last two pieces of ceramic material into the burner. I asked in the last episode, did anyone out there know where I could get this ceramic stuff from? The last piece I bought from Mike Abbott at Max Steam, and even Mike, who I spoke to today on the phone, said that he always found it quite difficult to get this stuff and no he didn't have any left anyway. I would like to thank two people who recently messaged me, and the first person said if I couldn't get hold of any of this ceramic material, he had some from his stock that he would be prepared to let me have. And that was a very kind thought, and I thank you for that. And the second person who messaged me added an eBay link, and the eBay link was a current listing on eBay from an eBay seller actually selling exactly what I needed. And what makes it really interesting is the gentleman who sent the second link was called Mr. Burns. And just in case you don't get it, ceramic, burner, burns, well, a tenuous link perhaps. And if anyone's interested in buying any of this stuff from eBay, it's a company called LP Gas Services, who are an eBay seller, they have a shop on eBay, and they sell this stuff. I've put the company's name on the screen, and I'm also going to put a link to their shop in the text box below the video. So now I have a ceramic burner which doesn't fit in the boiler's mounting plate. Hmm, what am I going to do here? What I'm going to do is put the base in my vise and use an angle grinder to carefully get rid of some of the metal that's in the way of the burner behind the posts. And in case you thought that had gone mad, I did not throw my new burner on the floor there. That was a video special effect. Not as good as some movie special effects, but a special effect nevertheless. Right, the next thing to do is to tackle this hole in the middle. There's a hole in the middle of this plate for no reason that I can possibly think of, but it's the wrong size for one of these bolts, so what I need to do is plug it. So I've turned up a brass plug, then I'm going to silver solder this in place, and now the part looks like this. It is going to go in my acid bath, but not for the moment, because I want to test the burner first. So marking out the centre with the burner in position, I then drill a hole through the new bush in the mounting plate, and this allows me to use a 2BA stainless steel bolt to hold the burner to the bed plate. I think it's come to the time when I need to look through my collection of gas jets to find a suitable jet for the burner. My collection is a little depleted, and I only seem to have 10s and 8s left, 2 8s and 4 10s. And I do feel that I must warn you that making gas burners is not my forte. It's a bit of a black art. But nevertheless, I will continue. So I need to make a fitting to allow me to fit this gas jet in the end of the Venturi tube. And here it is. It has an internal thread at one end, threaded 1BA to take the gas jet. And here I'm tightening the gas jet with my two Barco spanners. And the other end of the fitting is threaded 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch to take the gas pipe. Not forgetting to tighten this as well. This is very important. You do not want any gas leaks. This piping is some silicone rubber that I normally use on the bench and it's for testing purposes only. The gas installation in the boat will be silver soldered copper piping throughout. But for the moment, to make sure that the silicone rubber doesn't come off the valve, I'm just using a cable tie to hold it in place. Now I'm testing the valve and making sure that the temporary joints are all gas tight because I will not be able to test the burner if I am personally on fire. It's now time to light the burner for the first time and see what happens. And it's quite good. Yes, that's what I want it to look like. Nice and red and rosy and very, very hot. As you can see, there is no gas escaping around the edge of the burner and that's perfect because I need to keep this flame well under control because this burner sits in a firebox that is full of holes 
and if the burner's too big and there's too much flame, the flame will come out of the holes and burn the boat from the inside. Not a good idea. I'm actually quite pleased with this burner. The gas burns very cleanly in it, and there is no bad smell in the workshop. Some gas burners are really bad. They do not completely burn the gas, so you get like a mothball smell coming out of the chimney. Usually this is down to not having enough oxygen to get complete combustion. And you can get a carbon monoxide problem, but I don't think I'm getting it with this burner, and I'm very pleased about that because I haven't died. On screen at the moment you can see that I've just half filled the boiler with water, so now it's time to light the burner in the firebox. And what you can't see at the moment is me sniffing the funnel. Not that I hang around in places where there are boilers and sniff the funnels, but what I'm looking for is this horrible smell that comes from a lot of gas burners. And no, it's as fresh as a daisy. Sometimes burners are okay in free air, but when you put them in the firebox part of the boiler, they'll start to emit fumes. Yes, one day all gas fireboxes will look this way. That's a really hot flame. And there's no great roar, it's running very quietly. Now there is some pressure in the boiler and you must not do this. I'm doing it so that you won't do it. There's about 30 psi in the boiler and I noticed that the water gauge was leaking. So it's instinct to reach for the spanner and tighten up the nut. And no, you must not ever do this. What you do is you turn the gas off and you wait. You open the steam tap, as I'm doing here, and only when every bit of the pressure has been dissipated, that means there's none left, you can then carefully tighten the nuts on the sight glass. If you over tighten these nuts, you will smash the glass. Now if you smash the glass at the moment, you're going to get a bit of water running out. If you smash the glass when the boil's got pressure in it, you will get boiling water and steam with bits of broken glass mixed in it, generally heading in your direction. So please take this warning. Never mess about with the gland nuts on a water gauge when there is pressure in the boiler. So with renewed confidence, having tightened the gland nuts without breaking the glass, I turn the gas back on. I light the burner and wait a while and the pressure is rising. And at about 75 psi, the safety valve blows off. But unfortunately, the safety valve does not stop blowing off and the boiler gets down to 20 pounds per square inch and most of the water seems to have gone from the sight glass. So I turned off the gas, waited until all the pressure had gone in the boiler, and it was nearly gone anyway, and using the same method as when I started, which is a bottle of water, piece of silicone rubber pipe, onto the clack valve, I refilled the boiler, but this time I filled it right to the top. In this next test I will be trying to adjust the safety valve to stop it from letting all the pressure out of the boiler. I'll show you how I do this very shortly, but first of all, I need to complete the filling of the boiler. Just a quick thought, I'd better mention it is very important not to fill the boiler all the way up, otherwise when it blows off, water will come out of the safety valve. So here once again, I'm relighting the burner, and in no time at all, pressure is raised, and it's just a case of waiting a while until the boiler's safety valve blows off again. There's something strange about boilers, they're almost like a living thing. It's making a breathing sound at the moment. That's actually the safety valve. And I've never figured out why they do this, but it's such an interesting sound. The pressure gauge is now at 50 pounds per square inch and rising. I would ideally like this boiler to blow off at 75 to 80 psi, certainly no more than that and certainly no less. But when the safety valve lifts, it needs to shut down and drop it to about 70 psi, not down to 25. This safety valve is a homemade type safety valve, it's not a proprietary one. I would generally use commercial safety valves because they tend to pop at the right pressure and only drop the boiler pressure a slight amount before closing again. Well, some of the time. And there it goes again. All the pressure has been dissipated. It's down to 50, dropping below 50. Let's see how far down it goes this time. This situation could prove to be very frustrating, so you could use one of these. But from a health and safety point of view, it's probably not the smartest thing to do, hitting a pressure vessel 
with a hammer, particularly when there is actually pressure in the vessel. What I'm actually doing is using a pair of pliers to lift the centre part of the safety valve and pull it upwards and then let go of it sharply, so it bangs the ball back down onto the seat, and this often does the trick. Another problem with safety valves is priming, and this boiler is not suffering from that because it's been cleaned out with the Kilrock K and there are no impurities in there. But if the boiler was a brand new one and there was silver solder residue still inside it, it may prime. That means that when the safety valve goes off, it lifts water. And when this occurs, there are two potential problems. One is you will get a shower bath. Luckily, by the time the water's been from the boiler's safety valve up to the ceiling and back down again onto you, it's cooled down somewhat. But the worst thing, of course, is it will empty the boiler. And if the water gets too low in the boiler, it can be dangerous, and both yourself and the boiler can be damaged. The good thing about gas-fired boilers is that if you get a problem, you can just turn the gas off. After reseating the ball on the safety valve, this is what happens. It blows off at 60 psi, and the ball reseats about 45 psi. I then adjusted the safety valve to blow off at 80 psi, and each time the pressure in the boiler dropped down to 50 psi before the safety valve closed again. When the boiler's fully cooled down tomorrow, I'm going to remove the safety valve and dismantle it and have a look at its internal components. Maybe it just needs a new spring. Once again, the boiler's water level is getting far too low far too quickly because the safety valve is blowing off for an excessive length of time. If I find out that the existing safety valve is no longer serviceable, for whatever reason, it's a very important part on a boiler, so I'll fit a new one. And finally, a health and safety notice. Always unscrew the gas tap from the gas canister when you finish playing with your boiler. Thanks for watching, and as always, I hope you found it useful.